Hi, I'm Renata Houts, and in this video I will go through a brief tutorial on rock curves and area under the curve. Rock curves and area under the curve are statistical techniques that allow us to determine how well a particular test performs in classifying individuals into groups. The examples I'll be using are drawn from our research paper that uses the Pareto Principle, that is the idea that 20% of actors account for 80% of results to identify a subset of individuals who accounted for the majority of economically burdensome outcomes in a four-decade birth cohort study. In this paper, those individuals who accounted for the majority of these economically burdensome outcomes were deemed high cost. I'll start with an example. Imagine we have 10 individuals. Three are high cost, seven are low cost, The question we'd like to answer is this. If we lined up our individuals in order of IQ, with low IQ individuals on the left and high IQ individuals on the right, can we use IQ to identify who is high cost and who is low cost? If we're going to use IQ to classify individuals, where we put our cut point for deciding someone is high cost or low cost determines how accurate we are. If we put our cut point here and say that individuals with lower IQ are classified as high cost and individuals with higher IQ are classified as low cost, we correctly classify two high cost individuals and six low cost individuals, but we misclassify one low cost and one high cost individual. In contrast, if we move the cut point to here, we correctly classify all high-cost individuals, but several more of our low-cost individuals are misclassified. We would like to find a way to show the trade-offs of using various cut points. To do this, we start by putting our data in a 2x2 two two table with the columns showing the true state and the rows showing the test result. If the test correctly identifies an individual as high cost, this is a true positive. With a first cut point, we have two true positives. If the test correctly identifies an individual as low cost, this is a true negative. With a first cut point, we have six true negatives. If the test incorrectly identifies an individual as low cost, this is a false negative. With a first cut point, we have one false negative. Finally, if the test incorrectly identifies an individual as high cost, this is a false positive. With a first cut point, we have one false positive. With the second cut point, we correctly classify all high cost individuals, but we trade greater accuracy in true positives for less accuracy in classifying our low cost individuals. With the second cut point, we end up with three false positives and only correctly classify four of our low cost individuals. Now we will take the information in the tables for the two cut points and summarize it in graphical rock curve form. Before we can do that though, we need to extract two values, the false positive rate and the true positive rate. The false positive rate is equal to the number of false positives divided by the total number of low cost individuals and the true positive rate is the number of true positives divided by the total number of high cost individuals. We begin creating our rock curve by assigning our axes. The x-axis is the false positive rate and the y-axis is the true positive rate. If our true positive rate is equal to our false positive rate, our line is a diagonal and indicates that we aren't doing any better than chance in our classification. In contrast, if we classified all individuals perfectly, our false positive rate would be zero and our true positive rate would be one, and we'd end up with this graph. Now let's plot the data for our first cut point. The x-coordinate is our false positive rate, or one over seven, and the y-coordinate is our true positive rate, or two over three. Similarly, for our second cut point, the x-coordinate, or false positive rate, is now 3 over 7, and the y-coordinate, or true positive rate, is 3 over 3.
Now we're going to move on to defining the area under the curve, which is a way to describe the classification ability across cut points. The first thing you'll notice is that the table we're working from is arranged a bit differently. It shows the number of true positives and false positives we get, broken down by the cut points we're considering. So, of the individuals who score less than the first cut point, we have two true positives and one false positive. Of the individuals who score between the first and the second cut point, we have one true positive and two false positives. And finally, if the cut point were moved to the maximum IQ, all individuals who scored above the second cut point would also be false positives. To calculate the area under the curve, we'll start by calculating the area of rectangle A. Remember that for rectangles, the area is equal to its height times width. In this case, the height is our true positive rate for cut point 1, or 2 thirds, and the width is 1 minus the false positive rate for cut point 1, or 6 sevenths. Next, we're going to calculate the area of triangle B. Remember that the area of a triangle is equal to 1 half its base times height. The height of triangle B is the same as for rectangle A, that is 2 thirds, and the base is the number of false positives for cut point 1, or 1 seventh. Now we'll calculate the area of rectangle C. Its height is the true positive rate between cut point 1 and cut point 2, or 1 third, and its width is the false positive rate beyond cut point 2, or 4 sevenths. Finally, we'll get the area for triangle D. Our height is the same as for rectangle C, or 1 third, and the base is the false positive rate between cut point 1 and cut point 2, or 2 sevenths. Now that we've calculated the area of the two rectangles and two triangles, finding the overall area under the curve is just a matter of adding them all together. When we do this for this simple example, we get the area under the curve is equal to 0 0.86. So, we've shown that in our example the area under the curve is 0 0.86. How do we interpret this result? Well, it means that if we take one random low-cost individual and one random high-cost individual, 86% of the time the high-cost individual will have a lower IQ than the low-cost individual. The rule of thumb about interpreting area under the curve is that AUCs, that is area under the curves, above 0.9 are considered excellent, AUCs between 0.8 and 0.9 are considered good, AUCs between 0.7 and 0.8 are considered fair, and AUCs between 0.6 and 0.7 are considered poor. Now I'll quickly run through some of our real data. I've graphed binned IQ distributions for one of our high cost, low cost distinctions. High cost individuals are shown in the red distribution, low cost individuals are shown with the green distribution. If we were to use IQ equals 60 as our cut point, 2% of our overall sample would be true positives, 1% would be false positives, 18% would be false negatives, and 79% would be true negatives. This translates into a false positive rate of 0.01 and a true positive rate of 0.1, and to this point on the rock curve. Moving the cut point to IQ equals 70 improves our true positive rate to 0.2 and increases our false positive rate to 0.06. Moving the cut point to IQ equals 80 improves our true positive rate to 0.44 and increases our false positive rate to 0.2. Moving the cut point to IQ equals 90 improves our true positive rate again to 0.7 and increases our false positive rate to 0.44. We could go on, but the end result of this example, using only binned IQ to predict high cost versus low cost group membership, we get an AUC of 0.7, meaning that for any two randomly selected high cost and low cost individuals, 70% of the time, the high-cost individual will have a lower IQ than the low-cost individual.